So this is a bit of an ECU simulator setup. Um, and what I'm gonna show is using electromagnetic fault injection as part of safety testing. Um, so what we have here is a accelerator pedal sensor. So this is removed from the accelerator pedal. As you press the pedal down, uh, the sensor will increase in position. And we'll see how that works in a second here normally. Um, the, there's a power supply for the ECU as well as the throttle body itself. So this is what's actually opening um, the throttle plate to allow air into the engine. Um, not everything is in this system. So in particular, the immobilizer is not actually paired to this used ECU. Um, so I can't actually get full fuel set up. So that's gonna be a later test. Um, but over here, what you have is these are the status of um, the igniters and fuel injectors. And I have a little Arduino that's configured to generate the appropriate signals, um, as well as having the mass airflow sensor and a temperature sensor sort of fake out measurement. Okay, so if we turn this on um, and use the start button, what you'll see is the um, igniters, or the, sorry, the spark plugs here, um, as I adjust the speed, of the claimed engine, uh, you'll see them blink slightly differently. So it's sort of hard to see. Um, probably helps if we zoom in a bit. Right, but you can sort of see those lights going there. So you can see that the ECU is actually um, active. And in the background, you can hear some minor adjustments to the, the throttle as well. Um, we can also confirm it's up and running because I have the OBD port connected too. So if I get like a little classic scan tool, Right, it's able to um, observe stuff about the system. And it just takes a second here. And it'll let us do all the, um, the data stream measurements. So what we're, we're interested in, in checking out is uh, how the throttle body uh, moves in relation to the um, throttle position sensor. And I'll also show you that the, the system is actually working. Um, with with all the sensors here. So if I scroll down, one of the options is uh, throttle, or maybe that's a TP, throttle position. So um, as I move this accelerator pedal, in the background you'll see the throttle plate open. Um, and you'll also see that it goes up to a maximum of about 80. And if I move this sensor any further, it's actually gonna go to a fail safe mode. Uh, because it thinks the throttle has uh, failed. And so now it only is open till 32% because it's, it's gone outside the allowable range. And I've got to bring it back down. So it goes down to about 20%. Um, and it's still in this limp home mode right now. You can see, because it's not opening any further uh, because it thinks the sensor's failed. So we can power cycle it. And hopefully it lets us go all the way now. Oh, no, it's still not happy. So I might have knocked a wire. So basically this limp home mode is uh, the system thinking that the throttle position sensor has failed, so it's trying to protect the user. Um, so let's just do a full power cycle. I'm not sure what you actually have to do to clear it. So, okay. so that reset this, so we won't worry about that for now. Um, but you can see, so right as I move the accelerator pedal, the throttle follows. Exactly what we want. Um, the throttle itself is a, a little motor controller chip on the ECU. And once I turn on the scope here, what you can see is it looks like pretty standard pulse width modulation output. So you can see very regular. The direction and width on each changes a bit depending on the position. So what we're gonna do is we're going to see how these waveforms change after we use electromagnetic fault injection to insert a fault into this device. Electromagnetic pulse. So this is basically similar to some of the ESD testing and stuff would do, but at a very specific point. So um, this can actually be used for security evaluation, but it effectively can insert memory corruption and similar things. What we might see is the device resets, so I'll hold the throttle open so you can see the throttle if it resets. Um, so you can see here, something really weird has happened, right, from that one fault. Um, so it seems like, okay, maybe, you know, maybe it's in some fail-safe mode. 
But let's give it more power. It's actually, uh, my one power supply isn't powerful enough because it's somehow uh, the pulse width modulation is weird. So you can see it kind of does follow. But if we look at the waveform, you'll notice that it looks totally different here. So it's completely, um, you know, non standard looking like those nice regular pulse width modulation is gone you can see it going um, to pegging all the way uh, for long periods of time so it's definitely been substantially changed uh, by this fault injection whatever it did here and let's just keep driving this and you can hear that stutter right things are not happy um, but it is still controlling. So if we were to pull up the um, lights here, I can adjust the speed they're going at by changing this RPM. And if we connect the, the tool, we'll get the same thing. So let's just keep driving this back and forth. And you can see it's not, it's, it's still letting me go pretty much open throttle. Um, and what I found is that if there's a bit of a power surge, Too much power surge. Uh, you sometimes get it, it, in fact, goes into a different mode where it just drives full. And you can see things are going really weird. And the interesting thing actually is that the memory corruption, if we turn this off, okay, all is quiet, and turn it back on again though. You can see it's still in this bizarre mode, and you can... Okay, and there, uh, what you can see has happened is that it has, in fact, jammed full open. Um, what's really interesting is, let's go and attach our debug tool. So this, this thing crashed on me. The, um, the reader itself crashed, right? If we go in, you might expect that the ECU is just totally frozen up, even though it should never do that. Um, but you can see this is this is really attached. I'm not tricking you here. Um, you can see that it's in fact connecting. Um, it says the malfunction indicators off. Some of this is fake because it doesn't have all the sensors. So I think. It might not be running some tests, um, but in particular, if we get the data stream, we can see what the throttle position is commanded to be. Um, and TP it was called, right? So that throttle position is 88.2. So that's interesting because um, that's beyond what was supposed to be allowed. So when I was manually doing it, it wasn't running that. Um, and if we adjust to the mass airflow reading here, just to show you that this thing is running, um, I'm gonna adjust, which of these, one of these is mass airflow. Yeah, that one. So one of these uh, potentiometers is connected to the mass airflow. So you can see that it's still updating stuff. Um, if I adjust, if I go up here to engine RPM, set really low and you can see I can crank that around and it's it's reading the engine RPM um, and this is despite the fact that it is fully jammed open and it's electrically commanded so if we pull up the PWR you can see basically here between the two lines that one has been set to the high and one's been set to the low so it's it's going ahead and command to that extreme level and if I try to push it Right. It's actually, it is, it, it's driving it fully. So it's just doing a full drive of um, the throttle to that open position. Um, and again, so if we turn the power off here, like this, turn the ignition off, um, it will shut back. And depending what happens, sometimes it, it seems to recover normally. So now let's see if our system's running. So I think it's not as bad. I think this is just a normal run now. And if you look at our, our thing, again, you'll see the maximum allowable is like 81, 82, right? Remember that was going up to 88 a second ago. So 
So when it's operating correctly, it won't go all the way um, up. And again, we can try, try to get lucky. That jitter is normal. Oh, there, actually, so that, I didn't even insert a pulse. It's, it's currently disarmed. Um, so it is still in whatever that weird mode is. So you can see something's gone wrong. Um, and basically, I think you have to fully power cycle it to get back. We turn off all the power. So you see there's no jitter. You can't hear the jitter in it, so it's working perfectly again. Much quieter. So that's how we can trigger um, fault injection used for safety testing with electromagnetic tooling.